The Mercedes GLC F-Cell, the first pre-production fuel cell vehicle by Mercedes, is to me the most important vehicle of IAA Motor Show in Frankfurt. I will tell you why in this review here, the static one, and also take a look at the exterior, interior, and of course, the facts behind this technology. We we'll just have water coming from the exhaust. Let's go with that in Auto Fuel, your number one resource for Inems Car Reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas, Full HD, Full Screen and Full Length. Let's go! So I'm a simple man, I see Thomas blue color and I love a car. <laughs> that will be the first reason why I like this vehicle, because this F-cell design scheme has this blue accentuations. I love the, you know, just love the design style of that. But then, you know, to the real reasons. We've seen a lot of different concept cars on the IAA, also full electric ones and really promising concept vehicles, but you never know Will it really come into production? Will it look the same? Will it have the same technology? How long will it take? But this one is not a concept vehicle. It is pre-production. So next year, this vehicle will be out there for sale. Um, they will probably start in three main markets where you know can also get the, the hydrogen then from the fuel stations. Probably, I think, it could be Japan, Germany and Norway. It's not confirmed yet, but I think so. Also, the price is not decided yet, but I'll soon give you more infos on that if we compare other vehicles. The front, I mean, it's a normal GLC, but then with those SMGations, still a very strong front. I think it makes up a very beautiful design for an SUV. Or what do you think? 4 meters 67 or 15 foot 3 is the total length of the GLC, and again, a normal GLC. Also for the S-cell, we have, first of all, this EQ power badge, because also has an electrification. This is actually a plug-in hybrid with a fuel cell, so you have both. Soon more deals to that when we take a look at the engine. Design-wise, you can see that the alloys here have those electric, or the electric blue style contrast. Also looks pretty fancy, 20 inch, by the way. Then the normal roofline, chrome frames around the windows. And this one here is actually for the hydrogen, H2. And for the plug-in, for the electric plug-in cable, it will be at the rear. So you will have two hydrogen tanks. They will take about three minutes to refuel. Big pressure, by the way, 700 bar. So it will take a little bit longer than normal refueling, maybe. Or, I mean, it won't be making such a difference. And the range for the fuel cell will be about 400 kilometers. Then, this one here for the plug-in hybrid, the electric one, you'll have just about 50 kilometers of electric range. The question is, why would you combine it? Maybe, you know, for some safety, you know, that people say, I know I have something else available. But then I think, if you're thinking now about um, getting an infrastructure for hydrogen, then you could also make it, f you know, full hydrogen vehicle, like, you know, for example, the Hyundai iX35 uh, or the uh, Toyota Mirai. However, I want to hear your feedback. Do you think it's a clever idea also to put the electric charging in there? At least you have a little bit more choice then. But it also, you know, probably brings the cost even a little bit higher as you have more technology inside the vehicle. Other than that, you know, the normal rear, design-wise, you have this additional blue stripe here. Again, I love it. So let's take a look inside the trunk. And the interesting thing is, you lose a little bit of space because well, you will soon see in the cutaway model where the tanks are, but here, just right below there, there's the battery, the additional battery. I'm just not sure. I mean, this one, you could have made just slimmer, that it sits right over there. But maybe it had also like heat insulation reasons or something like that. But overall, you'll use a little bit in height, but it wouldn't make such a difference. And I mean, you can always, like a normal GC, also, for example, here, flip the rear seat, then you have enough of luggage space left so that wouldn't be a real crucial factor what will be a crucial factor would be the price if you think about other vehicles the ix35 from hyundai it was about 65,000 euros the 
Toyota Mirai, 80,000 euros, pure fuel cell vehicles. This one here, I can just speculate on price that it could be around 80,000 euros, but it's just also theoretically because this one will not be for sale as a total price, you know, it will be offered for rent. They will start that way. And um, we'll soon hear more interesting things about the technology inside and also why they have combined the fuel cell and the electric uh, motor because this is actually the most interesting part. So what we have here, this is our fuel cell drivetrain looks like, of course, all covered again. And the interesting thing is really that in a fuel cell the only thing that comes out of the exhaust will be just water. You know, with the H2, the hydrogen, reacting then with oxygen, oxygen O will be H2O. Very interesting, for sure. Of course, you need a lot of energy to produce hydrogen, but if you could do that from your renewable energies, that, you know, could make a really full circle. So that could be a very interesting approach, for sure. The power output as it is right now will be about 200 horsepower. Definitely more than enough power. And this could also be another reason why going also for the electrification at the same time, because this one can also ensure you an additional power boost. And maybe, you know, if you're commuting to work or so, maybe with the electric drive you can charge at home, but you don't have a, you know, hydrogen fuel station directly next to your home. But maybe, you know, somewhere where you go like once a week, that could also be a combination, you know, what could justify then electrification, electrification plus the fuel cell. So pretty interesting approach. No one else has taken um, thus far in, in that way. And, well, the Mercedes GLC is one of my favorite combat SUVs, also one of the most comfortable ones. And there are also a lot of, you know, um, uh, different great interior choices available. And then driving it, you know, in an, in, with an alternative drivetrain, that could really make sense also for me, for example. And now we can take a look at the cutaway model. And we're also joined by Michael Kels, the chief engineer for the GLC. You can maybe explain us more what are we actually seeing because there's no real drive shaft. I think there's you know also another tank. So how does it really work? Also, how can you get the power from the fuel cell to the rear? Yeah, so in the end what you see is the two black things. These are the two hydrogen tanks. So uh, in total you can get 4.4 uh, kilograms of hydrogen in here and that gives you a range of about 440 kilometers. So you need roughly one kilogram of hydrogen per 100 kilometers. The energy flow in the end, is um, you take the hydrogen, put it into the fuel cell, and from the fuel cell, finally, these two wires here, the orange ones, bring the energy to the back. So this has no prop shaft, yeah, it's no doubt. So instead of that, we have the tank in the middle. So how does it work? Do the electric uh, electricity from the fuel cell go into the battery first or directly to the drivetrain both. and then from the... It's both. So it's going directly and also to into the battery. Uh, that depends really on the drive mode that you are using at that time. So we have uh, four different drive modes, plus you can go also uh, like at regular economy uh, or sports. And um, so you have two switches, you can um, have in total a collider combination of seven drive modes. The most important thing is in this case here that we have a plug-in hybrid. So that battery down there is not only a boost battery, which every uh, fuel cell finally needs. You know, but it's also a plug-in car, and that you see finally with the plug. We can, we can go right there. Yeah, we can go there. So this, uh, the, the top one is the battery now? The battery is on top. Yeah. This is a battery we also regularly use in the, just in the S-Class, which we have shown here also. So it's our latest and greatest um, battery for the plug-in hybrids. And um, this battery allows you to go in the cycle about 50 kilometers. So in reality about um, 35, depends on the conditions, weather and so on. But so the customer has also the opportunity uh, to go to just battery electric mode. Yeah? And in this mode, he saves the hydrogen and can go like I, I'm mainly going to work about uh, 25 kilometers a day. So I could just use the battery. So if I do not have the hydrogen infrastructure uh, near, I can use hydrogen for long uh, distance travel and the other for more the short distance travel. So it's both. But the second thing is finally the battery is also needed to get the 100 and 50 uh, kilowatts, so about 200 horsepower uh, for this car because the, the uh, fuel cell itself can only support about 70. So finally, and from the battery you can also drive about 100 and combined it's about 150. So you have to keep, for power driving, you have to keep a certain state of charge of the battery. 
And then finally, you can use both with a very intelligent system which is sitting behind and always checking how much is going into the battery. The last thing why you need the battery is definitely you need recuperation. Yeah. So also therefore we need the battery. And that's why we have a special system that takes into account what is the state of charge, how do I drive and so on. This is all, all made by computer, no doubt. So on the one hand, I mean, putting it also with the battery inside, it brings up the cost a little bit, then also a little bit more weight, but then you have the advantage for the recuperation, you can have, you know, a more, you know, a better power boost. And the thing is also, you know, the fuel cell vehicles, they, when you have a pure fuel cell vehicle, they like to run, you know, at a certain static RPM maybe. So you can maybe like uh, even out when you have more boost or less boost. Is it also better when you have the battery electric then? Now every fuel cell car has a battery, but finally, uh, just for the uh, boosting and for the recuperation, you could take a smaller battery. In this case, our um, way is to make the fuel cell smaller. The reason for this is um, you need platinum for the fuel, for the fuel cell and uh, the more you need, the more expensive it would be. So finally we have to balance and we said we want to have the 150 kilowatts, which should also be there not only for a short time. So we need a pretty big battery and with this we have the advantage that the fuel cell is smaller, so the costs go down. Yeah. And we have the second thing that we have um, the plug-in situation. Yeah. And that's the reason why we have combined this like this first time. So we are the first real plug-in. Yeah. So um, let's imagine that, for example, 200,000 people per year would buy this vehicle here. Is that then also possible you know, for you know, economies of scale to bring down production costs? So would it be possible you know, in a distant future to produce this vehicle here you know, as affordable as you know, a normal GLC? We believe that we can get the system there, but finally not in this generation of the GLC. So this is still a system which uh, would not be so really affordable for the customer, so finally there is further progress needed. But as you can see from all our vehicles, we always get better, we always have more range, yeah? so we can drive the costs down in the end, but actually also on this car, uh, we will not get into those costs that we can really uh, sell 200,000 vehicles a year. So this will really take minimum to the next generation. This is one of the more sad things uh, about the fuel cell. Uh, but in the end, it makes really sense. Um, we get a lot of more experience and so on. So finally, it makes sense to go ahead. But it will take some time. Thank you so much for the insight. And we are really looking forward to drive the car next year. You're absolutely welcome next year. Second half of next year, this will be possible. And it's fun to drive, no doubt. And after the technology inside, what is missing in a static review, of course, the interior. Let's take a look at it. I love the matte wood styling here. It's also in general available for all GLC models. Great interior built quality. Also, you have a big bottles. You can have some space. And then the rest of the interior is not really that different. Of course, there are different also Artico leatherette seats available and also Dynamica and uh, cloth seats. So that's a good offer, even if it is not right in here. So, and let's take a normal seating position. Seat was pretty high. Steering wheel has, yeah, it has received some updates. Let's see, oh, there's even electric control. As you can see here, we haven't seen in the GLC yet. Here, those are also the buttons for, you know, from the E-Class where you can press and then change something in the instrument and also like scroll, for example, with the thumb left and also right. So those are the new controls that you can also control here. But we know it also from our S-Class review that when you don't have the key and the ignition is not turned on fully, the engine is not, you know, doesn't have to run, but like the second ignition turning on, um, then you can click those buttons, but you cannot scroll. So they do work, but not, you know, when it's here at the motor show in the low uh, um, power consumption mode. So interesting that we have then all digital gauges also here in the front. Let's maybe put the steering wheel more to the front that you can see it better with the camera. So all digital gauges, which will then also help, you know, with this uh, uh, display then for the power, for, for example, recuperation or power use from 
from the battery. And here also the fuel set is then for the H2, pretty interesting. And I think the digital gauges fit the GLC very well, don't you think so? So pretty interesting finding it good that we did the interior here, right? Also, new digital screen, but I think you can better see that also when you take a seat behind me. So, and now take a look at the cockpit perspective. I really like the GLC in general, you know, that really strongly wrapped everything, clean design, also with a lot of natural matte wood. Great styling too. And then now the new widescreen format. To have even more view, for example, on the GPS. And then I can control it at the steering wheel, for example. Soon I will also be when the ignition is really turned on to be able to scroll with the thumb and then zoom in and out on the screen. Um, here there's the home menu. And um, then you can choose it here with the new visualizations. Also connect the phone via Bluetooth or also use the um, messages me connect for example, here with CarPlay, Android Auto and stuff. And what's also interesting, in the lower part here, there's a new touchpad. And this turning, pressing knob is gone. And you can scroll up and down. And you also have, you know, an acoustic feedback. And also, you know, somewhat, it has some, I would say, small vibrant. You can, you have somewhat of a feedback also when you, um, when you're clicking this, for example. So it really likes, you know, with a, like on a, on a MacBook Air, for example, uh, or a normal MacBook, when you press and turn and stuff. I mean, why not? And I think it's also slimmer, so design-wise, it's also better integration than the the thick module you had there before. So, and you will then here have different driving modes, for example. For example, when you have a mode to, to charge the battery, um, we talked about that, different energy flow options. So it's pretty interesting, for sure. And you can pick the driving modes also here then and or go to uh, this boost dynamic mode. On the other side, you also will have the camera and stuff. But so a lot of new innovations we see here. This will also come to the normal Mercedes model, this touchpad, the widescreen form, and also the digital gauges. This one here will remain standard also with two USB chargers and a lot of space inside here. Let's get in the rear. And, well, you sit relatively high. This is the difference then here for the fuel cell vehicle. Knee room is uh, basically the same. I'm one with 86 or 6 foot 1. It's totally okay. Also when a tall driver like me would be driving now. But it is really notable that the rear bench is higher. And this is, we've seen it also um, you know, in the cutaway model because I'm sitting on the hydrogen tank. Not the best feeling, but it's of course very, very thickly insulated. So, and then headroom, especially when you combine it with the panoramic roof, will come close. So, it's still working. I mean, for children, it might even be better to sit a little bit higher, to have a better overview. For tall adults, it's definitely a little bit... Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I have to get used to it. I mean, when it's higher, you also, you know, don't feel that cramped. So without the panoramic roof, it would maybe make even more sense to me. So I think it's still okay. Just have to be aware that at the moment, as it's built right now, you lose a little bit of the height then. And here, for example, the armor is normal. Cup holders can be folded out. So pretty interesting. So it was definitely worth the while. Take a look at the interior. A lot of changes we've seen here. So I started out this review here with the assumption that it is the most important vehicle of this year's motor show. And to me it still is. It is not the solution for next year for all our mobility problems. Definitely not. But it is still a very, very interesting approach. First of all, design-wise, it's typical for Mercedes, really elegant with those blue accentuations. I really love it. The interior, great in refinement and for the GLC you also have sustainable seating choices. Then we've seen new interior solutions with the digital gauges which will come probably for a GLC facelift also with a new touchpad. I think also very good innovations we've seen right there. So that you know also normal vehicles will definitely profit from. Then of course the most interesting part also with the cutaway model, the technology behind it. I was first very skeptical when I heard that you combine the fuel cell with the electric drive with the battery actually. Well, fuel cell is always electric drive, but you know, fuel cell plus battery electric drive. Because it brings up the costs even higher and 50 kilometers of, of pure electric battery range doesn't make even sense. But then when I talked to the expert and then it slowly 
made sense to me to have the battery as a buffer, you know, because you can even out, for example, recuperation on the one hand and really boosting power on the other hand. And maybe also, you know, as a transition for the infrastructure that you have another possibility. So obviously a fuel cell is in some ways meant to work together with the battery electric vehicle. So that also makes sense. So that was actually the biggest surprise to me. So I learned really a lot from that. And that makes this concept, of course, even more interesting. The only, let's say, a little bit disappointing thing is that it will not be available yet for purchase for real. You can rent it. Then again, maybe you get a good rate from Mercedes because they probably even subsidize it even further. And so introducing that technology, of course, they also need the customer feedback thing from those guys who are actually renting this vehicle as early adopters than in 2018. So it could be actually a solution, not for next year. The prices could go down when you have a mass production of the hydrogen vehicles. That could actually work. But the question is when, of course. Still, as a technology showcase, which is really close to the real production, I think that was a very interesting approach and still, to me, the most important vehicle of the motor show. Of course, I want to hear your feedback. If you think you agree to me, and what you thought about this vehicle, technology-wise, exterior and interior. And also see you at next How to Go Fuel episode. Full reviews or still some more features here from the Frank and Motor Show.